Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how you can solve problems involving complex numbers. And the method we're going to use is where we equate the real parts and the imaginary parts. And at the end of this tutorial I've got a couple of questions here you might like to try. Uh, two is harder than one but uh, they follow the same principles as I'm going to show you. And I'll give you the work solutions of these also. So how do we solve an equation like this? a plus 2bi minus b plus ai all divided by 7 minus 2i equals 1. And we've got to find these values of a and b. Well, what we need to do is clean up the top for starters, group together the real parts and the imaginary parts. So on the top here we've got a minus b. So we'll put therefore a minus b and we'll bracket that together as the real part. And then for the imaginary part we've got an ai and 2bi so we could put plus and in brackets a plus 2b and then that's the imaginary part. And it's all divided then by 7 minus 2i and it equals 1. Now what I'll do is get rid of this fraction here 7 minus 2i by multiplying both sides by 7 minus 2i. So we have a minus b plus a plus 2b and that's the i part, the imaginary part, equals 1 times 7 minus 2i. So it's just going to be 7 minus 2i. Now when you get equations like this, when you've reduced it to this form just on one line, what we can then start to do is compare the real parts and the imaginary parts. Because this is the real part, a minus b, and it must be equal to this real part here, 7 and the imaginary part, a plus 2b, must be equal to the imaginary part over here, minus 2. So let's just write that down, that if we equate the real parts, we'll just put re, we've got a minus b equals the 7 then, and if we equate the imaginary parts, im, then we've got a plus 2b equals the minus 2. And what we have here is a couple of simultaneous equations. We'll call them 1 and 2. And to solve the simultaneous equations then we can either use substitution or elimination method. I'm going to use elimination method here because we've got the two a's that are exactly the same. So I'm going to do equation 1 minus equation 2. If we do that the a's get eliminated and we've got minus b minus 2b which is minus 3b equals 7 minus minus 2 which is 9. Divide by minus 3 and we then end up with b equaling minus 3. And then what we need to do is substitute that back into say equation 1. So sub in 1 and what we end up with then is a minus minus 3 equals 7, so a minus minus 3 equals 7, so a plus 3 equals 7, subtract 3 from both sides and you end up with a equals 4. So we end up then, if we just summarise, with a equals 4, b equals minus 3. So what we need to do then is reduce this to a single line like this, compare the real parts and the imaginary parts, and if necessary, solve some simultaneous equations. So hopefully that will give you an idea then of starting on uh, example one here and then going on to two. So I'll give you a few moments just to copy those down, have a go at them, and we'll run through them uh, in a moment. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Let's have a look then at the first question. 
So the first thing that I'd want to do here is expand out these two brackets. So if we were to do that, we get a times 5, which is 5a. Then you've got minus ai and plus 5b and then minus bi. And that equals all of this over here. I'm going to start to clump this together. We've got 10a plus b plus 1, that's the real part, and then minus 2a plus 1, which is the imaginary part. And so we need to clean this up here, group together again the real parts. We've got 5a plus 5b, that's the real part there. And as for the imaginary part, we've got minus, and then a bracket, a plus b, and that's the imaginary part. So it's going to be equal to the 10a plus b plus 1 minus the 2a plus 1 i. So what we can do now is equate the real parts together and if we do that we've got 5a plus 5b equals the 10a plus b plus 1. Now if we were to subtract 10a from both sides and b from both sides we'd end up with 4b minus 5a equals 1. And we can't go much further with that, so we'll just call that 1. And if we now equate the imaginary parts together, then we've got minus a plus b, minus bracket a plus b, must equal minus then the 2a plus 1. Well, clearly that means that a plus b must equal the 2a plus 1. So a plus b must equal 2a plus 1. That's if we multiply both sides by minus 1. And clean this up. We could take a from both sides and therefore we get b equals a plus 1. And if we call this 2, all we need to do now is just substitute 2 into 1. So if we just say sub 2 into 1, what do we get? Well, we're going to have four lots of a plus 1, so that's going to be 4a plus 4. If we expand that, minus the 5a equals 1. And if we carry on with this, we'll just come down here. We could do 4a minus 5a, which is minus a. We've therefore got minus a. And then if we take 4 from both sides, we've got 1 minus 4, which is minus 3, leaving us with a equals 3. Sub this now back into, say, 2. And that gives us that b equals a plus 1, 3 plus 1, which is going to be 4. If we summarise, we've got a equals 3 then, and b equals 4. So I hope you're able to get that one. Now I did say question 2 is a little harder, so we'll have a quick look at uh, that one. Now in 2, what I'd want to do again is to expand this bracket out. So if we do that, we've got a times 2, which is 2a and then a times minus 3i which is minus 3ai. bi times 2 that's going to be plus 2bi and then plus bi times minus 3i well that's going to be plus 3b. Remember i squared is minus 1. And then we've got ab plus 6 plus ai. Group together the real parts and the imaginary parts we've got 2a plus 3b, so 2a plus 3b. I'll put that in brackets. And as for the imaginary parts, we've got 2b and then minus 3a. And that's the imaginary part. And over here, we've got ab plus 6, that's the real part there. I'll put that in brackets. And then plus ai. So if we now equate the real parts, what have we got? Well, it's going to be 2a plus 3b 
equals AB plus 6 and can't really get much mileage out of this so we'll call that equation 1 and if we now equate the imaginary parts then we've got 2B minus 3A must equal the A and what we could do now is add 3a to both sides and so therefore we've got 2b equals a plus 3a which is 4a and that means that b equals 2a if we divide both sides by 2. So we'll call that equation 2. And to solve this all I've got to do now is substitute b equals 2a into equation 1. So if we say sub b equals 2a into 1 then what are we going to get? Well we're going to have 2a so we'll just put therefore 2a plus 3 lots of b 3 lots of b is going to give us 6a equals a times b so that's a times the 2a so that's 2a squared plus 6 so we've got a quadratic equation here. This is going to be 8a equals 2a squared plus 6. If we rearrange this, we've got 2a squared. Take away the 8a and then plus 6 equals 0. We could divide both sides now by 2 and we could thin this out then to give us a squared minus 4a plus 3 equals 0, which will factorise couple of brackets then and we've got an a and an a and we've got a minus 3 and a minus 1. So each of these factors could equal 0 giving us a equals 3 or a equals 1. And then we just need to substitute these values back into 2. So if we just say sub a equals 3 and a equals 1 into 2 then what we have is that when a equals 3, b equals 2 times 3, which is 6, and when a equals 1, b will equal 2 times 1, so that's going to be 2. So, a couple of solutions here. You could check them out if you like, as a little exercise to check that they work, but you'll find that they do. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then how you can go about solving equations like this just by comparing the real parts and the imaginary parts, which can often lead into simultaneous equations. All right?